Hi, my name is Keith, and this is the Yellow Springs Vintage Audio Channel. Today's topic is tape bias from a technician's perspective, or what does the technician need to know about bias in order to properly uh, adjust um, the tape deck bias settings. So let's begin. First, uh, ferromagnetic material. Recording tape is made up of multiple layers, and one of the layers, the topmost layer, is made of ferromagnetic material. And all that means is it's material that can be magnetized and demagnetized. Um, and typically these materials are made out of uh, iron, nickel, chromium, or cobalt alloys. And the, uh, the magnitude or a measure of the, the field strength needed to magnetize or to de demagnetize is called the coercivity of the material. And if it takes a stronger signal to demagnetize than to magnetize, then that's called hysteresis. All recording tape has a hysteresis. Um, and it, it really, you know, it, you just have to be aware of that. Uh, there is uh, a difference in circuitry. That's why the signal, um, well, that's why there's an erase head. Um, because it takes a stronger signal to erase the tape. You can't just do it by, by re-recording over it. You need to erase it first to restore it to a known condition and then apply the record signal. So there are different types of tapes uh, for cassettes. Uh, there's like three major types and for reel to reels there's, there's many variations of uh, two types. Um, so the first type is the normal tape, which is just an iron oxide. Uh, it uh, doesn't require a lot of bias. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of hysteresis. The second type is a, uh, referred to as a type 2, or a, uh, in the old days it was a chromium dioxide tape. Uh, nowadays the chromium dioxide has been replaced with a cobalt al alloy. Um, and it uh, has a, a higher coercivity and a higher is hysteresis than the normal tape. Uh, cassettes also use a third type of tape, or it's actually a type 4 uh, metal tape that um, has an uh, even greater dynamic range, meaning it also has a, a even higher uh, coercivity and higher hysteresis. The real real tapes are just um, mainly a lot of different variations of the, the normal type 1 tape and variations of the type 2 tape. Um, the, the big difference about why real real sound so much better is because the, the tape is bigger, the head gap is bigger. Uh, then not, instead of being a little tiny one, it's a, a bigger head gap so I can put more signal on the tape at the same time. And it it moves a lot faster than a cassette tape. So um, it can put the material over a larger area of the tape. Um, so this comes to the bias. So um, it was found that in, to have, a, have the tape record um, evenly across the frequency range of 20 to 20 kilohertz, it needs to be in a linear portion of the curve. And let me show you what I mean by that. So here we have a curve. Um, and uh, this is the basic curve here. The basic curve. The, um, you can see if something was recorded out here with no or little bias value. Uh, if anything did get recorded, it would be down here in this part of the tape, 
which would be a very, very low output. And uh, it would probably only be the absolute very loudest passages of the tape. Um, the same thing if you recorded something over here, uh, it would be very loud, but it would be, most of it would be up here when the tape is saturated. So you would lose just lots and lots of detail. Um, and any detail that you would have is it would be the very lowest passages, but it would be played very loud. So it would just be super distorted and sound terrible. This is what we're looking for, is a bias value that places the audio tape or the audio signal in this straight linear portion of the response curve. Uh, when done properly, it will record the, uh, the audio in this portion of the, of the curve and give you an uh, output that is uh, in the middle of the dynamic range. So you have lots of headroom for uh, these instantaneous, really loud um, bursts of music and also lots of uh, bottom end, uh, um, low end for picking up the tiniest little sounds. Uh, so that would be the ideal and that is the, the goal of making the bias adjustments. When you make the bias adjustments, say on normal tape, you try the over bias for 3 dB, which means you make the you make the adjustment and you turn the adjustment until you get a peak on the uh, VU meter or, or a, a voltmeter that you're monitoring it with. And then you keep turning it until in the same direction uh, until the signal drops down 3 dB. And that's referred to as a 3 dB over bias, which what you just did is you put in 3 dB of headroom so that any peaks in the music that um, kind of instantaneous little peaks that, that exceed the average um, by 3 dB will still um, be put on the tape and not be distorted. Some, da some tapes you can over bias by 4 or 5 or even 6 dB over bias, which is not uncommon on new real-to-real uh, -real tapes is that a 6 dB over bias. And that, what that means is you have, you're adding 6 dB of extra headroom for these uh, really short instantaneous uh, spikes in volume uh, while retaining um, plenty of uh, bottom end to make sure that you don't lose any of the tiny quiet little uh, passages. So what does the, the signal actually look like? So um, <clears throat> this is what the two signals will look like. If you're going to put this recording, say you're recording a calibration tape and you have a 400 hertz tone coming into your uh, tape deck. Uh, this yellow line is the 400 hertz tone and then this purple part is the 100 kilohertz uh, bias uh, signal. Typically you want the 100, you want the bias signal to be five times what the uh, highest frequency that the tape deck can record. Um, normally, I mean the ear, the normal hearing range is 20 to 20 kilohertz, uh, at least in theory anyway. So five times that would be 100, five times the 20 kilohertz would be 100 kilohertz, uh, which is what um, TIAC uses on their, TIAC and TAS game uses on their cassettes and their reel to reels. Um, some cassette decks don't uh, use a bias frequency, frequency that high. I've worked on some that only use a 50 or a 60 uh, um, kilohertz signal. Um, the, the goal though is, is to use a bias signal that is sufficiently higher than the audio signal that when you go to strip the bias signal off, you don't take any of the audio with it. So coming out of the uh, record amplifier, you have this yellow signal. Coming out of the bias oscillator, you have this purple. And then they get added and it looks like this. Where basically you have the audio signal riding on top of the bias signal. Cassette decks, 
I've never seen a cassette deck where uh, the bias was this much stronger than the, the uh, audio signal. It's more common for cassette decks to look like this, where the bias signal and the amplitude, uh, the bias signal and the audio signal are the same amplitude. Um, so if you would hook a scope probe up to the playback head of a uh, calibration tape, basically you would see what looks like a fat, fuzzy uh, sine wave. In the, but the fuzziness is due, due to the uh, buy signal on there. So, um, what are the kind of key, way, uh, uh, key points for technicians? First, the proper head alignment is absolutely uh, necessary before making any bias or EQ settings. Remember, EQ is a function of playback. It uh, does not affect bias. Bias is a function of recording, but it can affect the EQ or negate the EQ settings. If there is way too little bias or way too much bias, it will mess up the frequency res response, which could just kind of negate any EQ settings that you have put in. Um, and the other point uh, is that there are actually two bias tra traps. The first one is the one we talked about that um, looks at the signal coming off the playback head and the first thing it does is it, it passes it through a filter which blocks the, the high frequency, the 100 kilohertz byte signal, it will chop that off, take it away and eventually um, all that would be left would be the audio signal. There is a second bias trap uh, on the output of the record amplifiers. But that bias trap is to prevent um, the bias oscillator signal that's going to be added to that to the output of the amplifier. It prevents the bias signal from kind of seeping backwards into the record, um, the last couple stages of the record circuitry. Um, so if the the service manuals almost always have you check the first bias trap, the one that's in the playback section, um, but they don't usually have you check the one that's uh, on the output of the record section. So if you're having record problems sometimes and you, you can't figure out what it is, uh, you might want to look at that second bias trap and see if it needs to be adjusted. Um, perhaps some of that uh, bias uh, oscillator signal, the bias signal is, is working its way backwards into the record setting and causing distortion. Well, I hope you found that inter interesting um, and um, helpful. And if you have any questions about the uh, about anything that I talked about, um, just put them in the comments, and I will uh, respond. Um, if this is the kind of content you like, just uh, you know, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and um, as always, remember that. Uh, the best way to keep your vintage audio equipment working is to use it regularly. Take care, and bye for now.